Europe's far-right politicians have wanted to dismantle the European Union for years. But now, their tone has changed. L'obiettivo ambizioso di chi è intorno a questo tavolo è di dar vita al primo gruppo nel prossimo Parlamento europeo. Parties that once campaigned to abolish the European Union and its common currency, the euro, are now trying to attack it from within. And their strategy seems to be paying off. In many European countries, the popularity of anti-European leaders is on the rise. And in this year's European elections, far-right and anti-EU parties are set to take up to 30% of the seats, according to an opinion poll. So how did we get here? Just a few years ago, support for the European Union was at its lowest. First of all, there was economic malaise and a lot of people were upset and angered at the economic policies in the Eurozone, especially where the financial crisis had hit particularly hard and the governments were uh, forced to impose austerity measures. And, and then secondly, in 2015, um, o- almost a million people came over this panel a few months, um, mostly refugees from the Middle East, but also economic migrants from North Africa. And this gave people the uh, feeling, the impression that the governments are not in control of the borders and neither is the European Union. Anti-EU politicians like France's Marine Le Pen and Italy's Matteo Salvini capitalised on some people's sentiment that the EU was the cause of all problems. Noi andiamo in Europa per ribaltarla questa Europa. And then, in 2016... The British people have voted to leave the European Union. The spectacle of the UK's Brexit process, which is still ongoing, made many voters realise how complicated exiting the EU can be. And Britain didn't even have the euro. A lot of people who previously were toying with the idea of leaving the EU suddenly started having second thoughts because they saw how difficult and painful and chaotic the Brexit process became and also how hard it is to untangle a country from the European Union. And therefore, also the populist leaders changed tactics. So instead of campaigning on referendums and leaving the EU, they started saying, we stay, but we want to change the EU from within. The new harmony European that we are en train to construire s'appuiera sur the valeur that makes Europe the liberty for each people to decide for himself, the liberty to choose his cooperation, the liberty to define his protection. So what do these parties do when they gain more power within an institution they have pledged to eliminate? It's easy for them to say no and to try to stop the EU, but on the other hand, it's very hard for them to agree what exactly the policies are. So what will happen most likely is that decisions will be much harder to take at EU level and they will just stall as much as possible any new areas of European integration. EU countries serving their individual interests over the Union has already led to misunderstandings and friction within the bloc, like when Italy decided not to allow migrant boats to disembark in its ports. As the rhetoric resonates with voters, traditional parties that are losing ground are also starting to become more critical of the EU. So while the European Union and the Euro's existence may not be threatened right now, its government is said to be more divided than ever.